In a video a few days ago, I came up with this build as what I would actually build if I was still building on my teacher budget and wasn't, uh, you know, had a bunch of good stuff for YouTube videos and all that. Uh, but a lot of you probably would have followed along with that build and then been like, okay, uh, Daniel, $1,350 is still completely out of my price range. So what are, what's in, what, what can I do, okay? So we're gonna look at now is we're gonna cut this build down and actually I'm gonna also act, some people also mentioned in the last build video that like I didn't actually do the build and test it out and all that. So in this video, we're gonna cut down the price and then I'll throw together some, uh, some actual benchmarks using at least the core components. I'm gonna be sorting prices low to high based on what's available today, but might use some comp exact components for the full build that I have sitting around uh, already. Um, otherwise, you know, quite frankly, I just don't have the money to just buy everything for a new, new this video is not gonna make enough money to pay for all the parts if, if I didn't just reuse some stuff I had sitting around. But here's the point. Um, so if you want to build on the latest CPU platform, one of the ideas with my last build was um, by building on the latest generation of AMD motherboard, you're able to get several more generations of CPU upgrades without having to get a whole new motherboard and all of that. Uh, however, um, you can save some money if you cut down an older one. Also, I went with a very expensive GPU. I went with the RTX 4070. I also discussed that the 6800 XT could save you a bit of money and the 6950 XT are also good options here from AMD. But again, we're talking in the $600 range on the 4070. So what we're gonna look at here is where can we cut this build down to still get an extremely capable gaming PC? And I'm hoping to fall in the, like the seven to $800 range. In other words, I wanna, I wanna cut this price in half, but still offer a very good 1080p or even 1440p uh, uh, gaming PC uh, in the latest games, not just playing old stuff. So first thing we're gonna say is like, Yes, you could shave off a little bit of money by replacing the 4070 from NVIDIA with the 6800 XT from AMD. Now we can totally do that, but again, that saves you a bit of money, but it's $520 now instead of $600. Cool, we're still at $1,260. If that gets you in your budget, I think that is one of the um, you know most effective places you could shave off a bit of money here. Um, but we're gonna continually peel layers back on this build uh, until we get uh, down, like I said, to like pretty much cutting it in half will be the goal. We'll see if we get that far. Now, the CPU does come, the Ryzen 5 7600, it does actually come with a stock cooler. So you don't have to get an upgraded cooler as part of the build. So if I shave that CPU cooler off and we just go with the stock cooler that comes in the box with the 7600, we've now shaved off a bit more. We're now down to $1,226. Where else can we cut some money? I've already gone with a very low budget case. So really, I, I, I don't think, you know, you could go with an even cheaper case, but we're already down pretty far in the budget, uh, budget realm on that one. Uh, again, if you're like, what are all these parts you had already? Again, you could look at my last video. Uh, first, I'm peeling back things that aren't gonna directly impact performance that much. Uh, if at all, and then we'll uh, look into what else we can do. Now, one thing is uh, I have an 850 watt power supply in here, which is actually overkill for this build. I have run th this level of components on a 650 watt power supply without issue. Um, it is pushing it, but it is possible if you get a decent unit. So uh, <laughs> you're gonna lose some upgradability for, for the future, but let's go ahead and pop out the $120, 850 watt power supply. And I do think we could squeeze in a 650 watt power supply as long as it's a, uh, you know, from a reputable brand, um, that kind of thing. Uh, I'm seeing a Corsair uh, 650 watt here for $90. Um, they've got, uh, okay, it's, it's I think, um, Let's see, there's a few other units in here. They got a one of their uh, slightly lower line CX750M for $80. Um, hmm. So there's a few different units we could go with here. Um, we can, like I said, uh, you know what, I'm just gonna throw in the $90 RM650X. Uh, we might be able to cut that down even farther if we needed to, but again, we're saving a little more money here. We're now under $1,200 on the build. So where else, and again, the power supply, as long as it can run your components, is not 
going to um, directly impact the performance as long as you are able to, to run the components without issue. <laughs> you don't want to cut it too far and get something no name that's going to destroy your build. Now, here's the thing. There's not a lot else we could cut. I mean, the storage, I went with a two terabyte drive, which are not terribly expensive here. Now, you can get one terabyte drives, uh, even fast SSDs, for very low money right now. SSDs are very inexpensive. So as long as you don't need to have a ton of games installed at the same time, we could get by with a one terabyte drive and maybe add in another, um, another SSD later. So I'm gonna sort capacity on PC part picker here, sort capacity at 960. I'm gonna click on SSDs. Um, we'll sort price low to high. Looks like you can get a one terabyte SSD. At first you get these SATA drives, which again, are okay. They'll, they'll do the job, but they're not, um, they're not super fast <laughs> uh, compared to what you could get for slightly more, like even this 11 JPS 600, I believe uh, would be faster. That's an NVMe drive. Um, I'm just kind of scrolling up here. Okay, we can get a one terabyte uh, for $37. I'm pretty sure this 11 JPS 800 actually is a PCIe Gen 4 drive. Let's uh, open it up here. Um, yeah, it's PCIe Gen 4, uh, up to 5,000 megabyte per second read. This isn't the highest end thing or anything at all by any means, but it is um, uh, It is a PCIe Gen 4 drive, at least, with uh, middling speeds. Uh, you know, not quite, it, it's definitely faster than some and slower than others. So, okay, we're gonna throw this in here and actually performance-wise, until you run out of space, I think this is actually slightly faster uh, than the uh, two terabyte drive that we had in there. Okay, we got that in here for uh, $37. We've shaved down to $1,160 basically. But at this point, we're really out of, um, we're out of room on the, the core components, the components that really impact your overall performance on your build. The CPU and the GPU, the video card, are going to be the biggest uh, factors on how well you can run games. And so at this point, we've kind of shaved down as far as we can go without starting to take some big losses. Now, when you are GPU limited in a game, then the CPU not being as fast won't directly impact your performance. And if you're playing the most graphically demanding games, you tend, especially if you're at a higher resolution, like 1440p, you like to play at high settings, uh, maybe even ultra settings, in the latest releases, there's a good chance that you're gonna be GPU limited. Now, if you're more of an esports gamer where you turn settings down uh, to competitive settings and you're shooting for really high refresh rate esports, that's where you tend to be more CPU and RAM limited. So, I tend to target, uh, you know, heavy AAA single player games with heavy graphics. But if you're more on the eSports side of things, you would cut the, I actually think you would want to cut the GPU before you cut the CPU too far. Um, and, and same kind of with, with RAM speeds as well. The CPU and the RAM kind of work together on when you're, when you're CPU limited. So because I'm imagining we're targeting graphically demanding situations where we're more likely to be GPU limited, uh, we could cut the CPU first. However, there is a bit of a downside here. If I go below this CPU, we're really going to have to um, give up a huge amount of upgradability in addition to the CPU performance because this is the latest generation uh, of AMD Ryzen platform on the AM5 motherboards, which should get a couple of big generational upgrades in the future. But the 7600 is as low as we can go here. If I go back to the 5000 series of Ryzen's uh, to save some money, it might not impact gaming performance right now when we're GPU limited, uh, but there will be games that do get a bit CPU limited. Uh, and, and a lot of Unreal Engine 4 games lately can get really CPU bottlenecked right now, but that's kind of a frustrating thing about the games, honestly. <laughs> but, um, but for the most part, when GPU limited, we're not gonna notice right now a big drop on, the, uh, on dropping the CPU, what I'm about to do here. We're gonna save a lot of money. We're gonna drop the DDR5 memory. We're gonna drop the motherboard and we're gonna drop this, uh, this 7600 CPU. And we're gonna go down to a Ryzen 5 5600. I'm gonna check the prices on it. Yeah, 
These things have dropped in price like crazy. A Ryzen 5 5600 will come with a stock cooler and it's going to actually have very good gaming performance. Like I said, we'll do some benchmarks at the end here. Now, I'll admit that the CPU I actually have on hand is a 5600X because I had it before they made the non-X part, but there's almost no difference uh, in boost clocks. There's a couple hundred megahertz of boost clock difference. In actual gaming performance, it's a couple of percent. They're basically the same thing. And we're gonna save $32, $31, um, by going with the non-X part here. And again, it comes with a built-in cooler. And uh, not only is that saving us a bunch of money on the CPU compared to the 7600, although we are absolutely losing some CPU limited gaming performance, um, this also means we can buy a less expensive motherboard and less expensive DDR4 memory. So first let's lock in the motherboard. So uh, you, I mean, if you sort prices low to high once you've picked the CPU, you can see that you can buy motherboards that will support this for as low as $70 brand new. However, these are the uh, A520 uh, chipsets, which do have some limitations. Also, um, you some of them will be the older B450 platforms, which um, I, I think are missing. I, do they have PCIe Gen 4 SSD support? I kind of don't think they do. Also, there's a chance that out of the box, they wouldn't support the Ryzen 5000 generation. They might need a BIOS update. Uh, so I'm going to prefer going with a B550 board um, for a bit more money. That's the latest uh, uh, generation of motherboard that supported this CPU platform. And uh, I don't think it's gonna cost us way more. We can get a B550 as low as $80, although it's not gonna be a great one here. A couple options from ASRock here, the Phantom Gaming 4. Okay, um, you know, we're not putting a super high powered CPU in here and I don't have all of the B550s memorized off the top of my head. Something tells me that this B550 uh, Phantom Gaming 4 is going to be fine for the Ryzen 5 5600. Um, maybe you wouldn't want, I don't know if the VRMs have been tested on like, you know, overclocking a 5950X or something like that. But I, I think this'll do the job. If you need Wi-Fi or something like that, you would probably have to pay a little bit more. Um, and this won't be exactly the same uh, motherboard that I will be um, testing because uh, right now I'm looking at what's the best price right now if I was gonna build this. But again, it shouldn't have a big impact on uh, gaming performance as long as it supports the parts and all that. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab that. Okay, so we're now, uh, oh wait, we do still need to get uh, some uh, RAM. Now RAM, I think even though we're, we're penny pinching here, I do still think RAM is cheap enough that we can get 32 gigabytes. We'd wanna go two by 16, not like one by 32 or something like that if, if they had that option, uh, because um, you wanna be running in dual channel mode. So I'm gonna sort for two by 16, and then we're gonna sort uh, prices low to high. So you can get 32 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM for as low as $48. However, you want the fastest speed you can get for the money and the lowest cast latency you can get for the money. And so I'm gonna look at, uh, I'd like to at least get uh, DDR4 3200 um, with cast latency of 16 for $1 more. But let's look if we could get anything slightly faster for about the same price. I, I'm, again, I'm looking at kind of these RAM speeds and okay, we got a 3600 CL18. Uh, it's only a couple dollars more. Now it's a faster speed, slightly lower cast latency. I think in the end, these come out about the same. I'm trying to remember if Ryzen memory uh, prefers the bandwidth over the cast latency. I I'm gonna go with the 3600CL18 because I actually do have a kit that speed, not this exact brand, but I do have a kit that speed for our actual benchmarks will do. Um, but I think the actual gaming performance to 3200CL16 is very similar. Uh, but anyway, I'm gonna drop this one in because it, uh, it also does match up pretty well with, like I said, the, the speeds on the, um, the benchmarks we'll be running here. Okay, so we've now cut a lot of future upgradability. Um, and, and some CPU limited gaming speed. But we are now under $1,000 and we still have the RX 6800 XT in here, 
which is a very good 1440p GPU and will crush 1080p. It's gonna crush most 1440p results as well. Um, especially when you're not trying to do heavy duty ray tracing or something like that. So this has now been shaved down to about $1,000. And um, like I said, you gave up something on the, uh, the upgradability of the platform, but it got us under 1,000. If we need to shave things down from here, I think it really has to be in the GPU. I would not want to go below this CPU if I was building new. I mean, you could look at, I think Intel 12100s are um, sometimes a good deal with the motherboards available and things like that, but I don't think they're that much less money than what we're seeing here. So, um, and this still at least would let you go up to a 5800X 3D if you found one cheap used in the future or something like that. Anyway, also if you're following along with this build and you already have a PC that's an AM4 motherboard, but maybe you have like a Ryzen 1600 or 2600 or 3600, um, dropping in a 5800X 3D without buying a new motherboard or RAM is not a bad idea. Or, or even a 5600, like I said here, down to $131 uh, if you wanna save money on going to a whole new system. Anyway, let's look into cutting the video card here. So if we go below this, the thing is at $500, the 6800 XT is a pretty standout value. Um, to get similar performance from NVIDIA, you have to go up to the 4070 for about $600, although you do get better energy efficiency and um, uh, some uh, newer features uh, and, and better upscaling DLSS, that kind of stuff. But that's costing more. From NVIDIA right now, unfortunately, the 4060 Ti is their $500 option. Uh, they have a 16 gigabyte that's their $500 option. And um, uh, I've done a video recently comparing the 6800 XT to the 4060 Ti at, at $500. It's, it's, it, the 6800 XT is by far the stronger raw performance there. Uh, you can go down to the eight gigabyte version of the 4060 Ti. Feels really bad to spend almost $400 for it. Um, you do get the latest features. It's only eight gigabytes of VRAM for almost $400. Feels kind of bad. Uh, if we're really trying to shave off some, some budget here, the 6700 XT from AMD, and sometimes the 6750 XT, which is basically the same thing with slightly faster memory. And that's, that, that is, a, a, I'm not sure that's worth the, the price jump right there, but the 6700 XT, uh, $320. Uh, this thing is priced about the same as a 4060, although the 4060 non-TIs have dropped down to 290. So it is still a little bit more, but the 6700 XT has 12 gigabytes of VRAM is very good 1080p and still quite performant at 1440p. You might wanna tweak some settings down or maybe use like FSR2 quality setting um, uh, in, in the newest, most graphically demanding games. Well, I think we'll benchmark at this. Uh, we'll come in with the 6700 XT. So right now we've got this build down to $776. Okay, so we are now under $800, and I think this is going to be very, very good performance. Um, you probably, so, so we could cut more here, but I mean, we're, we're pretty bare bones. I don't really like the idea of going super far below this point. Um, however, if you're just still like, I, I still don't have $800, <laughs> what else could you cut? So I'm gonna say that really, this is as far down as I would want to build personally. But if you're on a tighter budget, you could cut the GPU even further. Uh, or if you just prefer Nvidia and you're like, I'll, I'll stick to the eight gigabytes of VRAM and a bit less raw performance. Uh, the RTX 4060 uh, is down to $290. You could shave a little more money now. We're now down to $750. Um, and you get some added features, some less performance, also less power draw um, on the uh, going with the 4060. Uh, I do have a detailed head-to-head -head comparison of the 4060 versus the 6700 XT. Um, now, if you need to cut even further, again, we're, we're about as low as I'd wanna go on the CPU if we're building new, personally. Um, if you go much lower on the GPU, you're definitely gonna have to start make, making some trade-offs. I don't think 3060s have gone down far enough new yet. Uh, let me take a look. So the 3060, um, that's not a 3060. 3060, 12 gigabytes, yeah, $280. It's about the same, it's only $10 less than the 4060. It has more VRAM, but is less performant overall. I would take the 4060 
over the 3060 personally, especially if they cost about the same. Now, um, let's see, the 66, uh, the 7600 from AMD uh, will get fairly similar performance when you're not using ray tracing to the 4060 and shave you down to about $255. Now we're down to $710 on the build. So if you needed to get down to $700, and if you have to go below $700, um, I think the RX 6600 GPUs are, um, I think, the best deal in the uh, in, in that low of a price range. RX 6600, eight gigabyte, we're down at about $200 here uh, for that GPU. Uh, sometimes the, um, the A750s from Intel are in a similar price class, but uh, I, I still feel like Intel is pretty hit or miss on which games get supported well, especially if you wanna play older games. Uh, so I think for a lot of people, you still want to go with the uh, the RX 6600 here, uh, AMD option on that. And that gets us down to $655, which is half of, I think, where the build started out. But we have lost a lot of performance in the cuts. Now, of course, there's ways to go even below this and really scrounge together <laughs> some parts. Um, but I really think you start giving up a lot uh, if you go down below this point. And like I said, for me personally, I would do everything I could to fit at least the 6700 XT or maybe the 4060 uh, in, into the budget. At $320 here, I'm gonna uh, put in the 6700 XT. And we'll call it a $776 build. Now we'll do some benchmarks on a very similar system. Um, it has a 5600X, not the 5600 non-X, but again, the performance on that is extremely similar. The same speed of memory, a different motherboard. I have some kind of gigabyte motherboard that I just had le left, uh, left sitting around from a, um, a, uh, a bundle deal I got somewhere. Um, I have a PCIe Gen 4 one terabyte drive that's very similar speeds, but I think from Team Group. And um, I do have a 6700 XT, mine's the AMD reference model. And I'll be using a different case and power supply. I think I'll, I, I have it in a, uh, what is that? I think I have the Corsair 4000D Airflow, which is a slightly better, uh, slightly more expensive case. I haven't directly compared them. And a higher end power supply, but I can tell you that this power supply will power these parts. So it's not gonna be a, a problem. Um, any, it won't show up as anything different in the benchmarks that will be running on the 6700 XT and this. Again, PC power, uh, Part Picker is estimating this at about 400 watts of actual power draw, um, which should be fine here. All right, let's hop in and see how this does in some of the latest games uh, to see what you're getting for your $776 build. All right, I'm not set up super well for filming the actual build. Uh, but here it is, we do have the Ryzen 5 5600X there with the stock cooler. Uh, we've got 32 gigabytes of DDR5, uh, 3600CL18 memory, slightly different brand than what we saw on the uh, parts list. Again, we have the 6700XT, I, I have the reference model. And then um, it's a different motherboard, this is the uh, gigabyte. Oris Pro uh, AC, I think it has built-in Wi-Fi and such, which I'm not actually using. We're just plugged into Ethernet. Anyway, so uh, also again, slightly different case. This is the Corsair 4000D Airflow, because again, this is what I happen to have. So uh, what really matters though, is this is the Ryzen 5 5600, although it is the X version, a uh, couple percent difference, and then uh, the 6700 XT, same amount of memory. Let's see how it does in the latest games. All right, with Baldur's Gate 3 smashing all sorts of concurrent player, uh, you know, expectations and all of that, thought we'd load this up. You can see the stats counters. You can see the uh, temperature clock speeds on the CPU, all of that, uh, GPU. Now, right now, this is the game at 1440p at maxed out settings. And so, uh, again, 1440p, and right now I have... Uh, V-Sync enabled to get a locked 60 frames per second. This is uh, maximum settings, as you can see here. And I am not using FSR at this point. Um, so this is native ultra 1440p. And I'm gonna reset my uh, frame rate counters here. And you can see that we can pretty much lock 60 frames per second. Now, this may or may not be the most demanding area of the game entirely, 
but it is one of the more demanding areas I've been to so far. I haven't had uh, the chance to get super far into the game yet, but I noticed this swamp with a whole bunch of fog and things like that. Uh, it certainly isn't the easiest place in the game, and I got characters on screen here and all of that. Um, and again, uh, able to lock 60 frames per second. You see the frame time graph looks very, very smooth. This is the average current and 1% lows. Uh, CPU, again, it's a bit warm, but it's boosting fine. We're not CPU limited. Uh, but if you want to see the total performance we were able to get, uh, we can uh, turn off VSync, and now it will allow it to go uh, beyond 60 frames per second. You just might see some screen tearing now. Also, notice that the frame time graph gets these occasional little spikes now. Uh, so it uh, certainly was smoother with the with VSync enabled locking the 60 frames per second, but you can see that we're actually capable of more like 70 frames per second at max settings um, at 1440p resolution. Now, before we check in on some other games, and of course we could just turn down settings as well, but it looks like we don't need to. 60 frames per second in a game like this is plenty. And then if I do drop down to 1080p resolution, uh, you can see that we're now at maximum settings, um, now hitting around 100 frames per second. Um, on that, as we go out and into here with more of the fog on screen, I could zoom the camera down and all that. Um, it does drop a little bit, but overall, um, still over 60 frames per second. And again, we could uh, lock the frame rate or whatever if needed. Um, you know, I can hear the fan, but it's not like super loud or anything like that. Think about the stock cooler seems to be getting the job done. Let's check out some more demanding games. All right, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart is again one of the newest games out there. This one can use a lot of VRAM, but good thing we have 12 gigabytes here. And right now it's looking like a locked 60 frames per second, and the GPU is not even pushing full utilization here. And let's take a look at the settings. We are at um, 1440p, we're at native resolution. Notice no upscaling on here. And right now I've got it V-Sync to lock to 60, and we're at the very high preset uh, with no ray tracing turned on. But other than that, again, the maximum preset. And um, I think it actually makes sense also to turn off V-Sync and just see how far we could push it. Notice that you might now see some screen tearing uh, as we have... Um, VSync now turned off, so it won't line up with the capture card 60 frames per second. But uh, if I go ahead and hit the uh, benchmarker thing, we're now kind of in the 70s and even up into the 80s or 90s here. If I'm looking at kind of nothing, there's a little more on screen here, a little bit lower. Again, it's not really super extensive testing or anything like that. Um, but I don't remember what the buttons do in this game. Ah, there we go. I was playing this a little while ago and I kind of started playing Baldur's Gate. <laughs> All right, so yeah, it's looking like we're over 60 FPS, could easily lock to that at 1440p, very high setting, so basically max without, uh, uh, without ray tracing. And if we go down to 1080p resolution, let's apply that. And at 1080p resolution, looks like I'm now up into the uh, 80s, a little bit higher. There's somebody talking to me. And uh, I should probably test out some other games. All right, this is The Last of Us Part 1, just loaded into one of my saves. And I'm trying out 1440p Ultra, V-Synced to 60 frames per second. And it looks pretty close. Uh, I think that we might hit uh, a few dips below 60 if things get more demanding. Again, I just kind of loaded up a random save here. I guess there might not be as much going on as there could be, uh, but I will show you guys the settings. Um, we'll go into, uh, let's see, display. So we're at 1440p. Again, we are V-Sync on. If I go V-Sync off, we could see uh, a little more of the unlocked performance, but we might get screen tearing. So again, uh, V-Sync off, we're a little over 60. Um, so like I said, I think in more demanding areas, uh, we might see a few more uh, little dips below that. But again, on variable refresh rate, I think it'll be fine. Again, another thing where the ultra settings are using more than eight gigabytes of VRAM, but this has 12, so it's uh, doing fine there. 
Now, if we did want to uh, lower down to 1080p resolution, we can see what kind of frame rates we would get. So dropping down to 1080p resolution, uh, more of a higher refresh rate experience. Looks like we're up in the 80s instead of uh, in the 60s. So nice little boost there. And again, we could use upscaling, could turn things down, but again, this is looking like a good 1440p, 60, and a higher refresh rate, 1080p, and that's if you're pretty much maxing out the settings in the latest games. Let's try a couple other things before we're done. All right, this is Hogwarts Legacy, and we're in the town of Hogsmeade, and this area of the game is notoriously brutal on both the CPU and the GPU, and just loading things in in general. And the frame time graph doesn't look great here, and that tends to be the case in Hogsmeade, uh, just however you're playing the game, uh, even on some very high-end systems. But we are averaging over 60 FPS at 1440p ultra settings. And I can show you those settings, and then also we try out some 1080p. So we're at 1440p, no upscaling, uncapped frame rate, and we were at the ultra settings. Again, if you saw screen tearing and all that, that's because of the uncapped frame rate. Uh, let's go ahead and I guess uh, in this one I've got to lower the resolution this way because they don't have a true full screen mode, but still rendering at 1080p. And if we do this one, uh, again at 1080p, it looks like we're up into the uh, higher 70s. But uh, And this is where we can, we might be getting a little bit single thread CPU limited or memory bandwidth limited, and this is one of the issues with Hogsmeade. And this is one of the games, um, especially Unreal Engine 4, that gets unfortunately single thread limited in um, a lot of situations. If you head out of the towns though, it tends to not be quite so bad. The frame time graph gets a lot smoother. And again, this game is just uh, kind of like that sometimes. Anyway, I think we'll try out maybe one more game and uh, call it a day. All right, why don't we end with Cyberpunk 2077, and this is at 1440p high settings. Um, I was trying to see if we could lock 60. It seems like in the middle of the city with a bunch of cars running around and such, uh, we can occasionally dip a little bit below 60. And I think some of that could be on the CPU because sometimes we see the GPU usage drop slightly, but I think it's a little bit of both. Uh, so we're pretty close here. Graphics say custom because at the high preset, it would actually use FSR quality, um, which I had turned off. Now, if we uh, did want, oh, sorry. Uh, if we did want to leave on FSR quality, then we can, um, get up in the 70 FPS range. So the actual high preset, which does include um, upscaling, actually does average uh, up in the 70-ish range. And we could actually try the ultra preset, which again does include FSR quality. If we have FSR off, um, kind of down in the 50s, Again, on a variable refresh rate display, that, that could be fine, but I think a lot of people would turn things down a bit. Um, but again, if we go ahead and kick on FSR quality, which actually is the actual ultra preset, um, so that includes the upscaling, uh, then we are right around 60 frames per second, even kind of running through the city and all of that. And I think that's probably a good place for us to end the video. I hope all of you have an excellent day. I think I'm getting ran over by a car.